With Borderlands 3 right around the corner, we here at Suggestive Gaming figured it's time to head back to Pandora to take a look at the story of the universe so far. Note that we will be covering Tales from the Borderlands, which features several moments with multiple choices, in which we'll briefly mention both, as a canon set of choices has not yet been established. We also won't be referring to the various non-important DLC-specific events and characters throughout the series, so take note if you notice them missing. Before we begin, however, we do ask that if you enjoy these story summaries, please consider supporting us on Patreon, or becoming a member right here on YouTube by clicking the Join button. Suggestive Gaming is only two people who play and capture every single game shown here. This video, for example, took Chris over 70 hours to capture. We've been trying to put these videos out faster, so your support would help us immensely. Head over there and check out the perks, and if you can't, just make sure you hit that subscribe button either way. With all that said, this is what you need to know about Borderlands. In the year 2864, the Atlas Corporation, after finding a vault of alien weapons on the planet Promethea, sends several colonization ships to the planet Pandora in search of another vault. Unfortunately, upon reaching the planet, the workers discover nothing of value, only various artifacts from the planet's former inhabitants, the alien species, the Iridians. When the season changed, Pandora's inhabitant creatures emerged and posed a threat to the workers, who quickly departed from the planet. Later, the Dahl Corporation sends an archaeologist named Patricia Tannis with her team to research and find if a vault truly exists on the planet. She discovers that the vault does in fact exist, but can only be opened every 200 years using a key that must be assembled from three fragments. Atlas learns of her discovery and sends their private military force, the Crimson Lance, to capture her and extract the information. Faced with this opposition, Dahl quickly leaves, leaving Tannis and all of their other workers on the planet to fend for themselves. Tannis then sends out a signal to spread the legend of the vault and inspire others to hunt for the vault key fragments. Sometime later, a team of four vault hunters, Roland, Mordecai, Brick, and Lilith, arrive in the town of Firestone, where they begin to experience visions through the planet's Echonet communication network. The mysterious messages are from a woman calling herself their guardian angel, and she gives them instructions to find the vault. After finding a robot called Claptrap and a man named Dr. Zed, the hunters eventually find the first key fragment triggering Tannis to get in contact with them. She tells them what she discovered years ago and sends them to go find three more pieces. As they set off, Commandant Steel sends the Crimson Lance to stop them and retrieve the fragments. After the hunters successfully retrieve the second and third fragments, they return them to Tannis, who sends them out to find one final piece, which she claims was stolen by bandit leader Baron Flint. Once they arrive and defeat him, however, they find the chest supposedly containing the fragment empty. Steel contacts them, informing them that Tannis betrayed them, and that the three pieces they had previously collected were all that were needed to assemble the key, which was now in the Crimson Lance's possession. Steel then shuts down the Echo Net, severing the hunter's communication with the Guardian Angel. They then infiltrate the Crimson Lance's headquarters to rescue Tannis, who tells them that they need to restart the network and stop Steel before she reaches the vault. Upon restarting the network, the Guardian Angel contacts them again and leads the hunters to Steel. After fighting their way through not only Crimson Lance forces, but alien vault guardians, the hunters finally reach Steel at the vault. Unfortunately, they are moments too late, as she uses the key to open the vault. To everyone's surprise, the vault is revealed to be holding a monster called the Destroyer, which eviscerates Steel and her team. The Guardian Angel reveals that this monster was imprisoned by the Iridians long ago, with the key and guardians erected as security measures to ensure it did not escape captivity. The hunters are able to kill the monster, and the vault is sealed once again, restarting the 200-year cycle. Afterwards, General Knox takes command of the Crimson Lance and launches an assault on Pandora's Parched Fathoms region. The vault hunters travel there to find out what he's planning. After working with Mechanic Scooter to build a new vehicle, the hunters find his mother, Mad Moxie. She helps them build an even faster vehicle, which they use to jump an outcrop to reach the Lockdown Palace prison. There, they find an assassin named Athena, being held by the prison's leader Shank, who plans to turn her over to the Crimson Lance to collect her bounty. Fighting through the prison, the hunters eventually encounter and kill Shank, finding Athena afterwards. After freeing Athena, she works with the hunters to find and unlock Nox's secret armory. Once they arrive, they find Nox preparing to kill himself, having lost faith in Atlas, but upon noticing the hunter, he decides to fight them, with his armory being their reward for his death. They defeat him and loot the armory. After killing Nox, Athena eventually finds work for a programmer for the Hyperion Corporation named Jack. Jack sends Athena, Claptrap, who had met Jack sometime after the vault opening, and vault hunters Nisha and Wilhelm to find a vault on Pandora's moon, Elpis. However, on their way to Helios, Hyperion's moon base, their ship is attacked by an army of doll forces known as Lost Legion. They're able to crash land on the base and rendezvous with Jack. 
They try to activate the base's defense systems, but are blocked by an unknown signal from Elpis. They then attempt to escape, but are stopped by Lost Legion's commander, Colonel Zarpidon, protected by an unknown alien entity. Jack stays behind and sends the Vault Hunters to Elpis. There, the Hunters meet junk dealer Janie Springs, who helps them get to Concordia, where they meet with Moxie on Jack's orders. Moxie helps them find the signal that blocked Helios' defenses, which leads them to a doll station where they determine it was activated by the head of Concordia and former underling of Jack, the Merith. The Hunters go to the source of the signal to stop it, and on the way discover that Zarpidon is using Helios' main weapon, the Eye of Helios, to shoot a giant laser at the surface of Elpis. Jack meets back up with the Hunters, and they confront the Merif in his office, with Jack eventually killing the man, securing Concordia. Determined to retake Helios, Jack sends the Hunters to a Lost Legion base to retrieve an artificial intelligence to use in building a robot army. The Hunters do so, finding the AI, who renames herself Felicity. They take her to the Titan Robot Production Plant, where Jack works with a scientist named Gladstone. Gladstone suggests using a robot he built called the Constructor, which can in turn build more robots itself, creating a self-sustaining army. Felicity learns of the violence she's intended to carry out and refuses to help, but is forced inside, turning on the Hunters, who are forced to defeat her and delete her personality from the robot. Now with their robot army, Jack, the Hunters, Moxie, as well as Roland and Lilith from the initial vault search on Pandora, return to Helios and clear out the Lost Legion. They also defeat Zarpidon, who warns Jack of the consequences of his actions, as well as informing them that the vault on Elpis has already been opened before her death. Now able to manually reboot the Eye, they proceed to it where it is revealed to actually be the Eye of the Destroyer, the monster released from the Vault on Pandora. Moxie, Roland, and Lilith, knowing the Destroyer's power, betray Jack by destroying the Eye, preventing him from being able to use it for his own desires. Angered and vengeful, Jack brings the Vault Hunters back to Elpis, but finds Zarpanen's warning was true with the Vault there opened. The Hunters are then forced to fight and defeat the Vault's guardians, as well as its inhabitant, the Empyrean Sentinel. Jack enters the vault but finds nothing inside except a floating symbol, which he touches and is shown a vision of the future and another vault containing the warrior. Lilith teleports into the vault and punches Jack through the symbol, burning it into his face as a disfiguring scar. She leaves and Jack is left there to vow his revenge on her and the bandits of Pandora, drifting into madness. Athena, realizing the heroic Jack she started this journey with was dead, leaves him. Later on, Wilhelm and Nisha join Jack in his rise to power. Jack, now donning a synthetic mask affixed to his face to hide his scars, kills the CEO of Hyperion and appoints himself in his place, now going by the moniker Handsome Jack. Later, Athena reluctantly takes work from Jack once again, and they end up eliminating the entire Claptrap robot line, leaving the last one dismantled on Pandora in Windshear Waste, which is found by a hunter named Sir Hammerlock who repairs it back to working order. Years later, four Vault Hunters, Zero, Maya, Axton, and Salvador, are traveling through Pandora by train when it is suddenly taken over by Handsome Jack, who crashes the train and leaves them stranded in Windshear Waste, where they are met by Claptrap. Once again, the Guardian Angel contacts the Vault Hunters and leads them to the City of Sanctuary, a city made out of a derelict doll spacecraft, where they join a Hyperion Resistance outfit called the Crimson Raiders, whose main goal is to take down Handsome Jack. During a mission to rescue Roland, who has since become the leader of the Crimson Raiders, the Hunters meet Lilith, who they take back to Sanctuary. After leaving the city once again, they head to Bloodshot Ramparts, where they fight through various groups of adversaries to retrieve Roland and return him to Sanctuary. There, they discover that Hyperion has obtained the key to a newly discovered vault, and are transporting it on a train. Enlisting the help of Mordecai from the first team of Vault Hunters, as well as an adolescent explosive expert, Tiny Tina, the Hunters set out to stop the train. When they do so, however, they do not find the key, but instead Wilhelm, now transformed into a powerful cyborg. The Hunters defeat Wilhelm and recover his power core to use for Sanctuary's defenses. When they use it, however, the Guardian Angel is revealed to be inside and working for Jack. She enters the city's defense systems, shutting them down and allowing Helios to bomb the city. Lilith is able to activate the ship's engines and teleport it into the sky, transporting the Vault Hunters back to the ground. The Guardian Angel contacts them once more and explains that she is reluctantly working for Jack and truly wants to help them. She then leads them back to Sanctuary's new location. Once there, the Guardian Angel explains that Jack's plan is to open the second vault to unleash the warrior he had seen in his vision. She reveals that the key is being kept with her in a maximum security Hyperion facility. Because the key only recharges every 200 years, Jack plans on using her to charge it manually. The Vault Hunters set off to the Wildlife Preserve on the advice of Mordecai whose pet Bloodwing, who was captured by Hyperion, has an upgrade for Claptrap to help them pass the company's defenses. They are able to obtain the upgrade, but Bloodwing dies, causing Mordecai to vow revenge against Jack, joining the Vault Hunters at Sanctuary. 
With one hurdle of entering Hyperion's facility out of the way, the Vault Hunters, with Roland's help, acquire air support after meeting an infamous bandit leader known as the Slab King, who turns out to be the former Vault Hunter Brick, who also returns back to Sanctuary with the group. Equipped with the upgraded Claptrap, the Hunters storm the Hyperion base where they find the Guardian Angel, who is not only a real person, but also, like Lilith and Maya, is one of six Sirens, a human with mystical powers. She is also revealed to be Jack's daughter, and has been working based on his instructions since the very beginning, setting up the events to create his rise to power. In order to stop her father from opening the vault, Angel asks the Hunters to kill her, so he is unable to use her to recharge its key. Despite Jack's attempt at sending reinforcements, the Hunters are able to defeat them and kill Angel. Jack, enraged and vengeful, kills Roland and captures Lilith to use her to recharge the key instead. Fortunately, Lilith is able to temporarily resist his restraint and teleport the others back to Sanctuary. The Vault Hunters then set out to learn the Vault's location. Afterwards, Mordecai and Brick steal a Hyperion ship and fly there while the Hunters approach by land. The Hunters find Jack but are unable to stop him from opening the Vault, and the Warrior is unleashed. Following an intense battle, the Hunters are able to once again defeat the imprisoned Behemoth and kill the Warrior, bringing an end to Handsome Jack's plans. Afterwards, Handsome Jack is killed and Lilith attempts to destroy the Vault Key just as Brick and Mordecai catch up to her. Somehow, she accidentally activates a map of the galaxy with the location of multiple vaults. She proclaims there ain't no rest for the wicked, as Pandora celebrates the defeat of Handsome Jack. Meanwhile, Hyperion employee Reese is demoted to a janitorial position by his adversarial new boss, Hugo P. Vasquez. Having expected a promotion, Reese overhears that Hugo will be purchasing a Vault Key from a bandit on Pandora named August. He, along with his friends Vaughn, a low-level accountant, and Yvette, a requisition and transport employee, decide to steal a briefcase of money to conduct the deal for the key themselves. On their way to the deal, Reese picks up a flash drive from the body of a deceased Hyperion scientist, Professor Nakayama. Reese meets with August to buy the key, but discovers that it was a fake created by August's girlfriend Sasha, her sister Fiona, and their mentor Felix. Sasha and Fiona try to escape with the money, but a group of bandits led by Bossa Nova ambush them and steal it. Zero, one of the Vault Hunters from the Warrior Vault Expedition, arrives and follows Bossa Nova, who escapes with the money. Afterwards, Reese and Vaughn form a temporary alliance with Sasha, Fiona, and Felix to recover the cash. Hoping the flash drive he found will help them track down the briefcase, Reese installs it into his cybernetics, causing him to pass out. After Reese regains consciousness, the team finds Zero making his way into an old Atlas warehouse. They follow him inside, and Felix steals the briefcase, taking it for himself. At this point, Fiona can either shoot Felix or let him attempt to open the briefcase, triggering its explosive protection. Either way, both the money and Felix are gone. Zero kills Bossa Nova and reports back to Moxie, and the two discuss Zero's mission to find something called Gordis, which he has had no luck in doing so far. After the battle, Reese, Vaughn, Fiona, and Sasha reunite, and after Reese falls through the floor, discover some old Atlas equipment, including two keys that combine to display a map throughout the room. Suddenly, a hologram of Handsome Jack appears to Reese. Unbeknownst to him, the flash drive he installed contained an artificial intelligence of the deceased former Hyperion CEO. Jack informs Reese that they have found the Gordis Project, and that it will lead them to a vault. Seeking more information on the Gordis Project, the group head to Old Haven, where they hope to investigate another Atlas facility. However, on the way, they are attacked by Helios' cannon, and Reese and Vaughn are separated from Fiona and Sasha. Reese and Vaughn are forced to wander through a desert, where they are tracked down by Vasquez. Vasquez then forces the two men to dig their own graves, revealing in the conversation that Vaughn had made a deal with him to give up Reese, which Vaughn shrugs off as a means to keep him at bay. Luckily, with help from Jack, who discovers he can partially control Reese's cybernetic arm, and Yvette's loader bot, the two men are able to escape Vasquez. Meanwhile, Fiona and Sasha go to Hollow Point, where they meet Scooter, who helps fix their vehicle as they go to Felix's hideout to loot his supplies. There, they find a video he left which explains his motives for stealing the money, to pay off a crime boss named Valerie, who also happens to be August's mother, who had placed a bounty on all of their heads. The two are then ambushed by two bounty hunters named Finch and Kroger, but are able to escape, only to be chased by Athena, whom they believe is also looking to collect their bounties. On the run, the women are able to get their vehicle and eventually meet back up with Reese and Vaughn, and the group eventually ends up in Old Haven, where they are ambushed by August and Vasquez. Vasquez takes Reese, while August takes Fiona, leaving Vaughn and Sasha to be guarded by the goons. Reese and Fiona are then led to devices on opposite ends of the facility to use each of the two keys they found earlier. 
After the keys are used, barriers appear between Reese, Fiona, and their captors. A Gordis core is activated, and a group of security bots approach the two. They are able to disable them, however, either with Jack controlling Reese's arm or Fiona using a stun grenade. The group are able to escape with the Gordis unit, but are stopped by Valerie and her lackeys. She kills Vasquez, but before she can kill the others, Athena arrives and forces Valerie and August to retreat. Afterwards, Athena explains that she was hired by Felix to watch over Fiona and Sasha. Fiona then activates the Gordis unit, which turns out to be a robot who explains that she was created by Atlas to locate the Vault of the Traveler, which has the ability to travel across the universe. However, since Athena had killed all of Atlas' employees during her creation, Gordis was never actually completed. The group then follow Gordis' instructions and head to another Atlas facility to find Gordis' chassis. There, the group is able to obtain the upgrade, but not before Valerie arrives to capture them once again. Gordis is forced to reveal her next upgrade location, Helios, and Athena is taken away by Brick and Mordecai to be taken back to Lilith. Once there, Lilith threatens to kill Athena for her hand in helping Handsome Jack rise to power. However, Athena pleads with her by telling the story of what truly happened and why she initially trusted Jack. Her story doesn't sway Lilith, however, who attempts to kill her anyway. Before she can, however, the unknown alien that once appeared with Colonel Zarpadon appears to protect Athena. The alien, known only as the Watcher, is revealed to be one of the Iridians that once inhabited Pandora. The Watcher then warns the group that a war is incoming, and they will need all the Vault Hunters they can get. Reese and the rest of the group, save for an injured Vaughn, are sent by Valerie to retrieve Gordis's next and final upgrade from Handsome Jack's former office on Helios. To ensure their compliance, she also sends August and her two bounty hunters, Finch and Kroger, with them as well. They once again visit Scooter and his assistant, Janie Springs, who convert their vehicle into a spaceship. Scooter initially joins in their journey, but along the way is forced to sacrifice himself to stop the ship from exploding. Once they arrive on Helios, Reese disguises himself as Vasquez, while Fiona poses as a tour guide. Reese as Vasquez meets up with Yvette and discovers that she had betrayed Reese and had to deal with Vasquez. Reese makes his way back to Fiona, who gives a VIP tour. One of the group members tries to enter Jack's office and is promptly disintegrated, setting off an emergency lockdown of the office. Jack then tells Reese about a trapdoor in the office that he can use to enter it through the prison level. Fiona then gets herself arrested to help get Reese down to the prison, where he is able to successfully enter Jack's office and retrieve Gordis' upgrade. Down in the prison, Yvette appears before Fiona with some Hyperion guards, who had captured Sasha. Back in Jack's office, Jack offers Reese the opportunity to jack into the executive override port to effectively take over Hyperion. Reese can either accept this offer or refuse. If he chooses the latter, Jack forces him anyway, and either way, Jack is uploaded into Helios. Sometime later, Jack reveals an endoskeleton robotic suit, which he plans to put into Reese and upload his consciousness into to give him a body once again. Reese is able to escape the office and get the upgrade to Fiona and Sasha, who had escaped from their captors. Fiona and Sasha head to the hangar to escape, but Reese stays behind to disable Helios' core in order to send it on a collision course with Pandora, in hopes to finally destroy Handsome Jack. On their way to the hangar, Fiona and Sasha are confronted by Handsome Jack, but August arrives and shoots down the monitors, preventing him from interfering. At the hangar, Finch and Kroger appear and take Gordis, holding the rest of them at gunpoint. August has a change of heart and protects them from the bounty hunters, and Sasha is able to get into the ship, unfortunately leaving Fiona behind. Loderbot then sacrifices himself to ensure that Reese and Fiona can get to escape shuttles to get off of Helios before it crashes into Pandora. In the wreckage of the station, Jack again downloads himself into Reese's cybernetics to attempt to kill him. Reese is able to resist and pull out his cybernetics, and afterwards he can either destroy his eye implant to kill Jack, or keep him imprisoned inside of it. Afterwards, Reese passes out. Meanwhile, Fiona lands on Pandora and discovers that Gordis had been upgraded and used by Valerie to unleash the vault's guardian, the Traveler. Fiona makes her way to Valerie, finding a dying finch along the way. Once reaching Valerie, the Traveler kills her after a short confrontation, much to the anguish of an onlooking August. Afterwards, Gordis pleads for Fiona to use a nearby rocket launcher to kill her, as it is the only way to stop the Traveler. Initially, she is unable to hit her target, but Sasha arrives in the nick of time to help her aim the launcher and destroy Gordis, causing the vault and the Traveler to disappear. A good amount of time later, Reese awakens and is eventually knocked out and captured by a mysterious stranger, who also had previously captured Fiona. The stranger takes Reese and Fiona to Kroger, planning to hand the two over in exchange for a captive bandit. However, the bandit escapes and kills Kroger, tying up the stranger and releasing Reese and Fiona. The bandit then takes off his mask and reveals himself to be Vaughn, who then escorts them back to Helios, which has since been repurposed into a base for the Hyperion refugees, now called the Children of Helios. 
Once there, the stranger is actually revealed to be Loderbot, who took Jack's endoskeleton body as his own to seek the truth about Gordas' death. Loderbot then proclaims that with everybody assembled, they now had the strength to rebuild Gordas, defeat the Traveler, and enter the vault. The group agree and hatch a plan to rebuild a giant Gordas and use her to fight the Traveler hand to hand. They do so and set off to battle. During the confrontation, Fiona and Sasha enter the Traveler and plant explosives inside. As the two escape, however, Sasha sacrifices herself to stay behind to ensure the explosives detonate. With the explosives, Gordas' attack, and a cannon controlled by Vaughn, the Traveler is taken down and finally destroyed, leaving a dying Sasha on the ground. Fiona rushes over to be with her sister and gives her one final gift from their long-lost mentor Felix, a watch that rises up and heals her. Rice and Fiona help Sasha up, and the entire group celebrates their victory. Rice and Fiona then rush into the vault and approach the chest inside. After a bit of reminiscing, the two touch the chest and are suddenly teleported to an unknown location. Shortly thereafter, we find the Crimson Raiders leaderless, with Lilith refusing to take command. With no leader, ship, or way to decipher the map contained in the vault key, the raiders begin to grow restless before Sanctuary is suddenly attacked by an unknown aggressor using a poisonous gas that turns its victims into monstrous creatures. Lilith and company fall back to their headquarters, where Lilith teleports the Crimson Raiders off of Sanctuary, leaving the vault key to be captured by their attacker, Colonel Hector of the New Pandora Army, a long-abandoned doll battalion. Lilith and some vault hunters, looking for a place to regroup, eventually find a camp called the Backburner, along with its sole remaining inhabitant, Vaughn. The hunters help Vaughn reset the camp's defenses, and the rest of the Crimson Raiders rejoin them there, using it as a temporary base of operations until they can take back Sanctuary. The hunters then head out to retrieve samples for Tannis to make an antidote for Hector's Paradise Gas. After returning with the samples for Tannis, she determines that she cannot produce an antidote, but does trace the gas to a scientist named Cassius Leclamane, a former Atlas employee that Vaughn met during the Traveler incident. Vaughn contacts Cassius, who admits that he created the gas for Hector under false pretenses. He promises to start work on an antidote and invites the hunters to his laboratory to retrieve it. The hunters meet up with Mordecai and with the help of his new pet Talon, protect him from an ambush, but not before he's infected by the gas. Lilith takes him back to the camp, and the hunters head to meet with Cassius. Unfortunately, their way to him has been reinforced by Hector, and they'll need to find a heavy weapon to blast through it. They determine that their best bet is Helios' cannon, and Vaughn instructs them on how to get to it through a dangerous area called the Burrows. On their way to Helios, the Vault Hunters meet up with Brick, who helps them reach Helios, where the Hunters fight their way through more infected to finally reach the cannon. Once they reach it, Lilith teleports Tiny Tina there to provide her explosive expertise. After assembling and loading explosives into the cannon, they blast the gate Hector reinforced, allowing them to go through. Stopping by Backburner to grab a sample of Mordecai's blood on the way, the Hunters finally reach Cassius' lab. Once there, the hunters insert the blood sample into Cassius' scanner, and after discovering that the sample had been tainted, the professor reveals himself to be in the late stages of infection as well, and asks the hunters to put him out of his misery and use his own blood as an additional sample to produce the antidote. After killing Cassius, the hunters collect his blood and scan it, finally producing the antidote and giving the hunters immunity to the gas's effects. Through the lab, the hunters are able to get back to Sanctuary and make their way towards Hector, unblocking the ship's engines on their way. Once they finally reach him, Hector infects himself with the gas, transforming him into a giant, vine-like creature. The hunters are able to defeat him and attempt to retrieve the Vault Key, but Hector's roots have already grown too deep within Sanctuary. Lilith arrives to stop Hector, who absorbs the key into himself. Lilith then uses her Siren abilities to destroy Sanctuary, taking Hector with it, preventing him from infecting all of Pandora. Unfortunately, this also causes the Raiders to lose the Vault Key, and the map contained inside of it. This does not discourage Lilith, who states that they never needed a map in the past, and encourages the Raiders to start looking for vaults off-planet, finally assuming leadership of the Crimson Raiders, and vowing to stay on Pandora to find new recruits and someday retrieve the map. Elsewhere on Pandora, we see the Vault Key lying on the ground, still intact, and waiting for somebody to discover its hidden information once again, likely in our next installment, Borderlands 3. Hey everybody, thanks again for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give a like and a subscribe for more story summaries and other gaming content. Make sure you leave a comment letting us know what you'd like to see next, and consider supporting us by becoming a patron or channel member here on YouTube. Special thanks to our current patrons, some glass clippings, William Mathers, Kai M, T-U-M, and Steven Castaneda, and our channel member, Tom Callahan. Thanks again.